long ago. A message went to children of Israel. Went to the priests, the, the leaders, the religious leaders of Israel. Yeah, even while they're in captivity in Babylon, because they had forsaken the way, because they had forsaken the Torah, because they have forsaken the ways of righteousness. And it's given to me to read today because the message hasn't changed, the conditions haven't changed. Today there are all kinds of religious leaders But few are the faithful and the true. But blessed be our Father in heaven. He does have his true and faithful. He does and he always has had those who do not bow their knee to the evil one. To serve themselves. And through the evil works the devil himself. Today I'm reading from Ezekiel, the 34th chapter. And it reads from the New King James Version of the Holy Bible, saying, And the word of the Lord, I find now in my King James Bible, everywhere it says uh, Lord, or it says God in capital letters. It, we look up in the original Hebrew and it was Jehovah. Father did not prohibit us from knowing his name. Good father, fathers want the children to know their name. And our father in heaven is no exception. He spoke through the prophets that the Gentiles would know his name. But the Romans didn't want his name to be told, so they prohibited it. And they burned a rabbi uh, alive, uh, which caused the other rabbis to say, "Well, maybe we'll we'll um, we'll stop speaking the name so that we can say it another day, another time." The time is at hand. The Romans are long gone. No more we're getting burned at the stake for speaking the name of our Father in heaven. So I'm going to use that His holy name when I read. The scripture. It says, The word of Jehovah came to me, saying, This is the prophet Ezekiel writing, Son of man, prophesy against the shepherds of Israel, prophesy and say to them, Thus says Adonai Jehovah to the shepherds, Woe to the shepherds of Israel who feed themselves. Should not the shepherds feed the flocks? You eat the fat and clothe yourselves with the wool. You slaughter the fatlings, but you do not feed the flock. The weak you have not strengthened, nor have you healed them, those who are sick, nor bound up the broken, nor brought back what was driven away, nor sought out what was lost, but with force and cruelty you have ruled them. So they were scattered because there was no shepherd. They became food for all the beasts of the field when they were scattered. My sheep wandered through all the mountains and on every high hill. Yes, my flock was scattered over the whole face of the earth, and no one was seeking or searching for them. Therefore, you shepherds, hear the word of Jehovah. As I live, says Adonai Jehovah, Surely, because my flock became a prey, and my flock became food for every beast of the field, because there was no shepherd, nor did my shepherds search for my flock. But the shepherds fed themselves and did not feed my flock. Therefore, O shepherds, hear the word of Jehovah. Thus says Adonai Jehovah, Behold, I am against the shepherds, and I will require my flock at their hand. I will cause them to cease feeding the sheep and the shepherds shall
feed themselves no more. For I will deliver my flock from their mouths, that they may no longer be food for them. For thus says Adonai Jehovah, Indeed, I myself will search for my sheep and seek them out. As a shepherd seeks out his flock, on the day he is among his scattered sheep, so I will seek out my sheep and deliver them from all the places where they were scattered on a cloudy and dark day. And I will bring them out from the peoples and gather them from the countries and I will bring them to their own land. I will feed them on the mountains of Israel in the valleys and in the inhabited places of the country. I'll feed them in good pasture and their fold shall be on the high mountains of Israel. There they shall lie down in good fold and feed in rich pasture on the mountains of Israel. I will feed my flock and I will make them lie down, says Adonai Jehovah. I will seek what was lost and bring back what was driven away. Bind up the broken and strengthen what was sick. But I will destroy the fat and the strong and feed them in judgment. And they did a good job on the sport, I we find the beginning of this prophecy has already began with the children of Israel that had scattered to every nation, every part of the earth. You can find the remnants of Israel deep in the heart of Africa, the Igbo tribe. Hey, they fled from captivity in Babylon, but they have suffered captivity in America. We find that even in China, there were there is a family that they look Chinese except where they have a straight nose and, and they they have uh, um, Jewish eyes and they light the menorah and <laughs> and keep the holy feast. We find in every nation the people of Israel are scattered but being drawn back to Israel, and yet those wicked shepherds that want to change the law and deny the good seed to the land, to the people. We find a time before us that deliverance shall come even in Israel and there shall be peace on earth and all the people shall rejoice as the people will receive the Messiah as is written that through the tribes of Israel, through the brethren, even through the tribe of Yehuda, there will come the prophet and there is none other. He has come. He is. And he was not, he was not merely a prophet, for a prophet is a messenger. A prophet is an ambassador. And he was all of that, but more. He died the death of a martyr, but he was more than a martyr. Martyrs don't get back up again. He walked on water. He multiplied fishes and loaves. He gave sight to the blind. And he still gives sight to the blind. He healed the sick, and he still heals the sick. He forgives sin. As he was, he is, and always will be. Of the Elohim, the word came forth and dwelt among us. He was wrapped in flesh, and he did no sin. He kept the laws written in the Torah. But in due season, in that pointed day, in that acceptable year of Jehovah, there came a time for the the Lamb of Jehovah prophesied that Abraham prophesied to come. The Passover Lamb was slain and he said, it is done, it is finished. He doesn't, he's not going to go back to the cross again. He, that is done, it is finished. If you want, if you need healing, 
You don't have to ask for him to do it again. He's already done. Have you received life? Life, the way, the truth, and the life is Yeshua HaMashiach. We call him Jesus. And he answers prayers because he's merciful and his mercy endures forever. Well, this word in Ezekiel, it didn't stop with the shepherds. It, it, it kept on going. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep on reading because the message, the title of this message is Shepherds, Sheep, and Lambs. So the message kept on going. I'm reading from Ezekiel, the 34th chapter, and now I'm coming into the 17th verse. And he says, And as for you, O my flock, thus says Adonai Jehovah, Behold, I shall judge between sheep and sheep, between rams and goats. Is it too little for you to have eaten up all the good pasture that you must tread down with your feet the residue of your pasture and to have drunk of the clear waters that you must foul the residue with your feet as for my flock they eat what you have trampled with your feet and they drink what you have fouled with your feet therefore thus says Jehovah there, this says Adonai Jehovah to them, Behold, I myself will judge between the fat and the lean sheep, because you push them side and shoulder, butted all the weak ones with your horns, and scattered them abroad. Therefore I will, slay, I will save my flock, and they shall no longer be a prey. And I will judge between sheep and sheep, I will establish one shepherd over them, and he shall feed them. The good shepherd is Yeshua HaMashiach. The good shepherd came, and he laid down his life for his sheep. And he gave a command, saying, As I have loved you, so you are also love one another. This command we have received that we should love one another. He spoke about little ones that believe on him, saying that it beware of offenses, because it would be better if for a millstone put around your neck and be cast in the midst of the sea than offend to cause one of these little ones to stumble. And so today we're looking at a time we can understand all that he spoke in the scriptures. He, he talked about a narrow way. He said, many are called, but few are chosen. Many are called. They hear, we hear his voice. He can even receive miracles. Some have died and seen heaven and been sent back, but still struggling to get into the way of holiness. My eyes have seen the king. I, I've seen heaven. I've seen hell. I've seen through the door to the, fire, the bottomless pit where the fire was so hot. The part where I saw there was no smoke. It, it, that means it's a very hot fire. No smoke. And I, I'm not going in there. I didn't have to go there. I don't want to go there. I'm not going there. Because I've turned to his way to study his laws. That I may keep them and walk in his ways. His he said two things. He said, sums up all the law, that you love your father and that you love your neighbor as you love yourself. Well, that would put out selfish ambition. And, and that would cause people to want to become mentors and to, to teach the younger ones. As the law says to teach from the rising of the sun to the setting of the sun the ways of righteousness. The children of Israel had received the first alphabet. They were received the first form of writing with, with phonetics. And it was the beginning of what we call Western civilization when people began to be literate. 
when Father gave his commandments on Mount Sinai, they had to learn how to read it. And that was part of the commandments that you teach your children how to read his law. And that was the beginning. Well, I find this message, we're talking, a lot of people, they don't go to church, they say the church is full of hypocrites, and, and then others they say, well, as soon as you find a good, a uh, perfect church, it won't be perfect more because you're there, and you know, if people are being mean, they say all kinds of terrible things, but love covers a multitude of faults. Love hopes for good, overlooks faults, and looks for good, and sometimes you got to make some good where there isn't any. And that's the way of love. It was exemplified by our Savior when he, he said that for God so loved the world, for Jehovah so loved the world, he gave his only begotten Son, that for whosoever believe on him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And then he went on later to say, no greater love can a man have than he laid down his life for his friends. He exemplified his love for us, said not while we were perfect, not while we were worthy of his sacrifice, because nobody is worthy of that. No, they torched him all night long, they shamed him, took his, they stripped him naked, and, and then, and then tore the flesh off him and he hung up no he was unrecognizable uh, open shame no there's no way nobody can, nobody is is worthy of that because the love doesn't have to have a reason this, this kind of love that he reaches out to us while we are yet sinners and lay down his life for us if, if we could get a hold of that then there'd be peace on earth if we would want to live like that, if we could forgive, regardless of whether huh, you say you say you're right, you say you're wrong, whether you're right or wrong, where's the peace? Where's the love? I'm on the message of shepherds and sheep and lambs. I find a passage in First John, the second chapter. It's a interesting poetic script. It goes like this. He says, "I write to you, little children, because your sins are forgiven." He said, I write to you, little children, because your sins are forgiven you for his name's sake. I write to you, fathers, because you have known him who is from the beginning. I write to you, young men, because you have overcome the wicked one. I write to you, little children, because you have known the Father. I have written to you fathers because you have known him who is from the beginning. I have written to you young men because you are strong and the word of Jehovah abides in you and you have overcome the wicked one. In this passage we find the message of the shepherds, the sheep and the lambs. The little lambs are the little children who trust and believe on their father. The fathers are they who beget the little lambs and show them the father, having known him who was from the beginning. But the young men, these are they who, who stand against the evil one. And declare this word, they prepare the fields. 
that good seed may be sown. They bring the water. They bring the seed and the water and they stand and with patience endure and in good season reap a harvest. I remember the scripture with my, this we call him Peter, in English Peter, I'm, I'm looking in Hebrew it would be Eben, but after the resurrection and when they realized he had risen from the dead, they saw him on the shore and he had prepared a fire as well, they were fishing and hadn't caught anything all night long they're out in the lake and hadn't caught anything and as when he had first called them it's the same situation they were, had been out fishing all night long he said cast the net on the other side well when Peter recognized it was uh, it, Savior he put on his fisherman coat and dived in the water and swam to shore saying forgive me but after they had eaten after they had their fi ate their fish and all that the word came said Peter do you love me and Peter said yes and he said well feed my feed my sheep and again he asked said do you love me feed my lambs and again he asked and he said feed my sheep sheep beget lambs for all belong to the king we have a responsibility everybody wants love everybody wants peace but everybody has responsibility to give the love and to give the peace we the sons of the most high are called peacemakers and thus I come today declaring to you of the Prince of Peace, the King of Glory, Yeshua HaMashiach. He is our healer. He is the great physician. He is the Savior. He is our Redeemer. Whatever situation you're in, He is the answer, the cure, the way truth and the life. I come to you speaking of this one Yeshua HaMashiach for I have known him since I was 19. I met him when I was a young man. I found him to be faithful, true, friend, father, savior, redeemer. He healed my body when I was, when I was broken. When I, I couldn't get up and, and walk down the stairs. He healed my body. When I became a man mature enough to hear a word of correction, he, he told me plainly where I had need to make some change. He told me plainly I wasn't right and I had to get right. I searched the scriptures and I continue to seek and I continue to find. For narrow is the way that leads to everlasting life. Difficult is the way. Few of them are to find it. But blessed are they who continue in the way. For them is everlasting life. Blessed be the word of Jehovah both now and forevermore. Amen.